the district attorney of Tomah Rakat is taken to the podium now. Thank you all for coming. Is this working? During the pendency of this investigation, we've heard over and over again the word justice, the cry for justice. The public has been crying for justice for Kelly. In order to make sure that justice has been done, the Orange County District Attorney's Office was entrusted, it, entrusted with the task of investigating this case and getting to the truth. Since July 7th, We've been in pursuit of the truth as to all of the facts and circumstances of this case to try to determine what happened on July 5th at the Fullerton Bus Depot. Our office took our responsibility faithfully and seriously. We executed the task thoroughly and efficiently. In Orange County, we generally trust our law enforcement, and we have good reason to. I believe that law enforcement in Orange County is second to none. My office works every day with thousands of police officers from 26 different agencies. They're hardworking. They make daily sacrifices to protect and to serve our community. We must do everything that we can to ensure that we protect this trust, including, if necessary, prosecuting police officers who violate the law. In our pursuit of the trust, the Orange County District Attorney's Office conducted a thorough investigation over the span of 11 weeks. You'll get a full and extensive list of all of the evidence that we've considered, but it includes videotapes, including those from two cell phones, the surveillance video from the Fullerton Transportation Center, the pole camera there, bus videos, 151 witnesses, police reports written by all of the involved Fullerton Police Department personnel, medical reports, examination of physical evidence such as batons and tasers, the coroner's report. We also conducted all relevant legal research to determine the applicable law as it applies to this case. After considering all of the law and all of the evidence in this case, I'm charging Officer Emanuel Ramos with second-degree murder, one felony count of second-degree murder. And I'm also charging Officer Ramos with one felony count of involuntary manslaughter. If convicted, he faces a maximum sentence of 15 years to life in state prison. Corporal Jay Cicinelli is charged with one felony count of involuntary manslaughter and one felony count of the use of excessive force. If convicted, he faces a maximum sentence of four years in state prison. The biggest shame about this case is that it didn't have to happen. It could have been avoided. It never should have happened. We're alleging the following facts to support the charges in this case. Ramos set in motion the events that led to the death of Kelly Thomas. By committing an act that was dangerous to human life with conscious disregard for that life. His actions were reckless and created a high risk of death or great bodily injury. And any reasonable officer would know that acting the way Ramos did would create such a risk. Cicinelli used excessive force when he assaulted and beat Kelly Thomas, acting recklessly under color of authority and without necessity. At about 8.37 p.m. on July 5th, Ramos and Wolf responded to the Fullerton bus depot in separate vehicles. Ramos knew Kelly Thomas from prior contacts as a homeless person who hung out in the area. He did not believe that Kelly Thomas posed him any risk. Kelly Thomas was shirtless with a backpack, wearing pants with no obvious bulges, the officers did not think Kelly Thomas even needed to be patted down for weapons. During the detention, Officer Wolf stepped 10 to 15 feet away behind his vehicle. He went 
to the rear of his vehicle to review the contents of the backpack that Kelly Thomas had been wearing when they, when they arrived at the scene. While Ramos gave instructions to Kelly Thomas from two feet away from Kelly Thomas. It was obvious that Kelly Thomas had difficulty following Ramos's instructions. His instructions were to sit with his legs out, outstretched with his hands on his knees. It would be obvious to any reasonable observer that Kelly Thomas had cognitive issues and that he had difficulty following Ramos's instructions. After several minutes of increasingly aggressive instructions, the bus depot video shows Ramos escalating the contact into a physical altercation. It was 16 minutes from the initial contact to the beginning of the physical altercation and the engagement of unlawful police conduct. Ramos made a deliberate showing of putting on latex gloves in front of Kelly Thomas. He approached Kelly Thomas and he stood over him. Ramos repeatedly instructed Kelly Thomas to sit with his hands on his knees and his legs outstretched. And Kelly Thomas had trouble following that instruction. He would move his hands from his knees to behind his back at times, and he would fold his legs up in a sitting position, bending his knees. Ramos stood over Kelly Thomas. With a pair of latex gloves, and he made a demonstration in front while he was standing over Kelly Thomas in a very menacing manner, demonstration of putting on those gloves. When he put the gloves on, and I have to refer to, uh, to some language here. It's not my language, but it's the language that was used by the officer, so it's necessary for us to refer to it. When he put the gloves on, he ordered... Kelly Thomas, put your hands on your effing knees. Ramos leaned over Kelly Thomas in this, in this most menacing way. He made two fists with his gloves on, two fists. He lifted his fists to Kelly Thomas in front of his face so that he could see them. And he said, now see my fists? They're getting ready to F you up. That declaration was the turning point. It was a defining moment. Ramos was telling Kelly Thomas at that moment that this encounter had changed, that it went from a fairly routine police investigation, a fairly routine police detention, to an impending beating by an angry police officer. By making this declaration of violence against Kelly Thomas, Ramos instilled in that victim Fear, a reasonable fear for his life, that he was in danger, and he was in danger by a police officer who wanted to F him up with his fists. Police officers have a right to use reasonable force in the performance of a lawful duty. But citizens have a right to self-defense, even against the police. If the police are using excessive force, if they're not performing a lawful duty. Ramos took this contact from a lawful detention to an unlawful use of excessive force when he lifted his fist and told Kelly Thomas that he was getting ready to up him up, F him up. There followed a brief exchange of, of words as Kelly Thomas remained seated. Ramos then grabbed Kelly Thomas by the, behind the, his arm. And Thomas pulled away. He stood up and he started taking steps away from Officer Ramos. Then the baton came out. Kelly Thomas put his hands up, palms out, in a defensive position, palms open. 
Ramos yelled at Kelly Thomas, get on the ground. Officer Wolf, seeing this altercation, came running out from behind his car. The evidence is that he joined, came running out, he came running out from behind his car to assist with the arrest that Officer Ramos was doing. The evidence does not indicate that Officer Wolf had any knowledge of this exchange that had just, indic that had just taken place between Officer Ramos and Kelly Thomas. The evidence does not indicate that Officer Wolf had any knowledge that Officer Ramos was engaged in unlawful police conduct. The physical altercation began as Officer Ramos swung his baton and chased Kelly Thomas. Ramos punched Kelly Thomas several times in the left ribs after tackling him to the ground. Using his hand to hold Kelly Thomas's neck, partially laying on Kelly Thomas to use his body weight to pin Kelly Thomas to the ground, and holding him for other officers who were responding to the scene because there was a call for help to use their physical force against Kelly Thomas. Ramos caused Officer Wolf to come to his aid and to apply force on Kelly Thomas, including tackling him, kneeing him, punching him three or four times, and using his body weight, holding and pinning Kelly Thomas to the ground. Cicinelli arrived at the scene at about 8.45 p.m. He kneed Kelly Thomas twice in the head and used his, and used his taser four times on Kelly Thomas. A taser that looked like this. Three of the times were a, a stun drive, contact, and fire the taser. And each of these, uh, each of these uh, times lasted about five seconds. The fourth was a dart deployment. Two darts fired from the end of the taser, connected to wires. And they, the darts affixed to Kelly Thomas for approximately 12 seconds. Kelly Thomas screamed and yelled in pain while he was being tased. Cicinelli used the front of the taser to hit Kelly Thomas in the, in the face eight times in the facial area, eight times while Kelly Thomas was pinned to the ground with the weight of the other police officers' bodies. All of this hitting with the taser happened, and there was no audible response from Kelly Thomas at that time. When Kelly didn't scream in response to these blows, it should have indicated to, to Cicinelli that Kelly was down and seriously hurt. The rest of the police officers who arrived at the scene, Officer Hampton, Sergeant Craig, Corporal Blatney, arrived in response to, call, to the calls for assistance. The evidence does not show any knowing participation in an unlawful act on the part of any of these three officers. And therefore, no charges are being filed against them at this time. From what's, video, from what's visible on the videotape, Kelly Thomas appeared to be acting in self-defense, in pain, in a state of panic. His numerous pleas of, I'm sorry, I can't breathe, help, dad, all to no avail. Screams, loud screams, didn't help. Kelly Thomas not responding when the blows to his face occurred? No help. A growing pool of blood as Kelly Thomas became unresponsive? Ramos is charged with murder for recklessly creating this dangerous situation. 
that placed Kelly Thomas's life in jeopardy and also creating a volatile situation for the other police officers responding to the scene. We simply cannot accept that in our community that it's, in, that it's within the police right to place gloves on a police officer's hands and put his fists in front of a detainee and say, these fists are ready to F you up. That is not protecting and serving. Ramos had to know that, the, that he was uh, creating this, a situation where Kelly Thomas would fear for his life and was struggling to get away from an armed police officer who was going to F him up. Ramos knew that the other officers would come to his aid and assist in applying force to Kelly Thomas. Ramos knew when he did that, that Kelly Thomas was going to get hurt, badly hurt. The cause of death in this, in this uh, case is, is uh, it's, it's mechanical compression of the thorax, making it impossible for Kelly Thomas to breathe normally. In other words, the chest being compressed Kelly Thomas is not able to inhale, and he can't take in oxygen. Over time, his brain was deprived of oxygen, and he became unconscious and went into a coma and died. That is the primary cause of death. The other injuries to the face and head contributed to the death. It falls so far short of of the professional and reasonable police conduct that our community has every right to expect and do receive by thousands of police officers from so many different agencies in our county every day. Police officers who, who put their lives at risk to protect the rest of us. All of the people in this great country of ours have a constitutional right to be free from the imposition of unlawful and excessive force under color, under color of law. That is the rule of law, and we will proceed to enforce it. Thank you, and I'll call on you if you have any questions. Mr. Rikakis, you said there is a possibility charges could be filed against the others. Are you, are you still investigating? How long might that take, and what charges could there be? At this, the question is uh, about charges being filed against as to the others, and that there would, might be a possibility of those charges. What I'm saying is that, uh, is that we're always open to, uh, to reconsider charges if any additional evidence were to come up that might, uh, that might create that. Um, frankly, I don't anticipate that. I think that we've seen the evidence pretty well, and uh, I, I don't think that the evidence shows the other police officers joining in any unlawful conduct that had occurred prior to their arrival there. Have you spoken yes. Yes, they'll be arraigned at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. Tony, who's yeah. going to be the uh, prosecutor on the case? Um, I have not selected a team just yet to, uh, to be the, the trial team on the case right now. I, I'm the lead attorney, and uh, um, I, I'm working with, uh, with staff, and we'll make that determination at, at, at a later time. Tony, yes? Have you spoken to witnesses who say that they specifically saw Officer Kenton Hampton pummeling Mr. No, that, that is not, that the video uh, shows uh, him not doing that, that he arrived at the scene, uh, he made some, he made, he had handcuffs, uh, he was attempting to put handcuffs on, on uh, Kelly Thomas, uh, and he uh, succeeded in putting one handcuff on, but the, no, no hitting or beating on the part of Officer Hampton is, is shown. Yes, ma'am. The two officers that are being charged uh, have turned themselves in to the, uh, to the district attorney's investigators, and um, they've, been, they've been booked at the Santa Ana Police Department. And uh, honestly, I'm not sure, as we speak right now, uh, where they are, with, if they might have bailed out or, or not. Yes?
Well, I, you asked if both of the charges come from that video. Um, the, the short answer is yes, the, but the video along with all of the other evidence. And of course, the, the video is, uh, is, a, is a critical piece of the evidence in the case. Um, and uh, it, it'll become a, a part of the public record when it's, when it's introduced in a court proceeding and probably not before that. Have we ever had a case like this in our county, Tony, where this district attorney's office has filed charges such as this against police officers here in our county? When you say char uh, charges such as this, you mean that uh, uh, a, an altercation uh, resulting in the death of, of somebody. This, this is the first one that I've reviewed that the uh, evidence has shown beyond a reasonable doubt the unlawful police conduct resulting in that death. We have, uh, however, filed charges against, uh, against uh, uh, police officers for excessive force, not excessive force that resulted in death, at least not while I've been in, in office. What, what, yes, ma'am. The question is if, if, the, if that surveillance video was not available and we couldn't see it, would we still have these charges? And uh, I mean, the honest answer to that is I'd have to say no. Um, certainly we would do all necessary investigation, we'd do what we could, but, uh, but I don't see how it would, uh, these details would come to light without that. Let, let, let me just add one other thing though, that it's not just the video, because I've said we've just been talking about the video, but what we have here is that uh, the police officers were also wearing um, DARs, uh, digital, auto record, uh, digital audio recorders. And so this is a combination of the audio recorders with the video. The video itself doesn't, doesn't have any sound. So the statement that you put up on the screen here, I'm going to F you, that came from the DAR of Officer Romans? Yes. Tell me, did the officers? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yes, ma'am. Well, the question is whether or not uh, all of the police officers should be taken off duty, and I, I just think that's a, a question that has to be left to the uh, to the police department. I, what I can tell you is that uh, that that we don't see criminal conduct on the part of the of those officers. We don't see knowledge on their part that uh, of of the unlawful conduct that took place before they arrived at the scene, and so um, so that's why they're not being charged. As far as uh, whether or not they're there might be some policy to, uh, uh, to or, or a policy to come to the aid of somebody uh, s who's uh, suffering in that manner. That, that's something that the police will have to uh, will have to decide. Yes, sir. There's a question here. Uh, Mr. Caucus, in reference to the fact that the other officers will not be charged, I think you made it very clear. Is there any recommendation going to come from you and your office in reference to the other officers, i.e. They should be taken off. Will you make any recommendation? Obviously, you're not going to charge them because, you, as you say, you don't have enough evidence. Uh, but is there enough evidence in your mind on the other officers that you will make or won't make a recommendation to the Fullerton Police Department? I'm going to leave that to the Fullerton Police Department. Thank you, sir. Yes. Wait, wait a second. Right behind. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The question is about Officer Wolf, and why is an Officer Wolf charged with a crime since he too was was uh, applying force and weight to uh, Kelly Thomas? And after all, it was the weight, really, of the com of the combination of police officers that caused that compression that didn't allow Kelly Thomas to breathe. Um, there's no evidence that Officer Wolf uh, had any idea that that. Uh, Officer Ramos had just engaged in that, in that, in that threatening and terrible conduct that I described, and uh, and so when Officer Wolf came from behind the car, he was coming to assist Officer Ramos in in making an arrest from 
what appeared to him to be a fleeing suspect. Now, one thing about these uh, types of situations is that, is that uh, e with respect to each individual, it has to be looked at from a reasonable person in that individual's perspective. And the law basically has a, a reasonable person standard, not, not, a, uh, uh, not a standard for just subjectively what that person was thinking or might have been thinking, but what would a reasonable person in the position of the police officer or what would a reasonable person in the position of the victim um, do or see or believe in the circumstance. So looking at, at this from the question of what would a reasonable police officer, a reasonable professional police officer in a position of Officer Wolf view, what would he see when he comes around from behind his car he, and he sees uh, Kelly, he sees that altercation uh, Kelly Thomas moving away from Officer Ramos and Officer Ramos giving him orders to get on the ground. Clearly, it's reasonable for that police officer to think that he needs to assist with the arrest of a, of a, a fleeing detainee at that point, and that's, that's what I believe took place. Yes, sir, there's a question back here. Ron Thomas, this is Eric. frustrated and wants to know why he couldn't be here after the meeting when you talked about all this. Well, I think it's important. I'll meet personally with with uh, with Mr. Thomas at the end of this uh, at the end of this uh, uh, briefing. So we'll sit in the office and talk to him, and I'll make sure that all of his rights under Marcy's law are are afforded to him. You know, yes, sir. Tony, uh, could you give us a sense of your reaction when you first saw that videotape? I mean, you you described a very heinous act here. Can you give us your description and your reaction to that? <laughs> I, you know, it's 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 a heart. It's heart rending. It's just it's uh, uh, it's 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 hard to watch and to listen to. It's uh, it's a it's a person um, saying he's sorry, calling for his dad, asking for help. He seems to know it's over just before it is. It's just. It's just, it's just sad. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's just, it's hard to listen to. So, I mean, I think any, any person listening to that would just, their heart goes out to uh, Kelly Thomas and what, uh, what he was subjected to. Is the audio on those EAR is, that, is the audio really clear? I mean, well, the audio, a, a lot of it, the question is whether the audio is really clear. A lot of it is quite clear. Some of it's not so clear, but it's pretty much clear in terms of what's Particularly with respect to that, the pleading and the yelling and and uh, been calling for his dad and and the saying that he can't breathe. Those things are very clear. Let's see, let's see if we get this clear. Has there ever been a time that you know of in Orange County history where these officers charged an on-duty officer? With um, I, I think that has happened, um, but but I but I. I, I recall that occurring, but I can't. Uh, it would be before I was the, the district attorney. So. If so, maybe one time, maybe one or two. One time is all I can recall. Tony, have you already filed charges, or are you going to a TPO? We've already filed charges. Yeah. Filed the charges that I've uh, or that I've indicated here. And it was this morning. Yeah. Today, yes, this morning. Yes, sir. Um, Tony, uh, just to be clear on this, apparently. Police officers who were not charged witnessed no criminal acts. And therefore, you can't expect their testimony to help convict the charged men of criminal acts. Am I reading this right? You you might be reading it right. I'm I'm not very sure everything that might show up in their testimony. I you know I, I know that that uh, we can't always predict everything that somebody might say or what somebody might have said later, some admission that might have been made, anything like that. Yeah, but but there's no, based on what we know, there's no evidence that any of these, that any of these, well, clearly these officers were not there when what I described took place. And they were responding to, a, uh, uh, to, that, to that call for help by the arresting officers. So no officers who aren't charged witnessed the taser to the face for example. Oh, they were they were present at, at that time. Yes, I mean there certainly there were there were other officers there were other officers who were engaged with um, uh, holding Kelly Thomas down 
at the time that took place. They watched that happen four times. Four tasers. There were other officers present during the entire time that the taser was occurring. And they're not charged. They are not charged. Yes, ma'am. I, I don't have any indications as to as to uh, their uh, state of cooperativeness. They have they're represented by counsel, and and uh, we'll we'll see as as we go forward. Tony, yes, you said sir. Initially, that the the officers did not talk to you and that they had not come forward. Did you end up talking to them, or at least the two that you've charged? No, we've not talked to the police officers. Uh, we have reviewed their reports. That's about it. But no one made themselves available to interview with you. Not at this stage. Yes, ma'am. Did the tasers play any part or contribute at all to his death? I'm sorry. Did the tasers themselves contribute to his death at all? Not the electrical impulses from the taser, but the, but the, but the hitting in the face, uh, I believe, was a contributing cause uh, because of the uh, because of the, the the extensive bleeding of Kelly Thomas's face. The question is, what about the motive, and why would he be so angry? And uh, I, that's that's a pretty good question. I, it just it just appears from the uh, from the uh, from watching the video that he becomes increasingly angered with uh, with Kelly Thomas as as the, as this as this goes on. So uh, I can't really answer that. Uh, behind behind you in the blue shirt, yes yes sir, in the back row, yes sir. You're, you're in the back row. <laughs> <laughs> you alluded to this um, a little bit about how they've had previous encounters. Can you elaborate a little bit more about how they might have encountered? Well, it's, it's very clear from the uh, uh, from the whole police conduct, or from 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 watching the watching the video and listening to the conversation, that uh, Officer Ramos uh, had had prior contact with with um, Kelly Thomas, and that uh, um, he he knew Kelly Thomas. More or less, uh, who he was—that he was a, a homeless drifter, and that that was frequented that area. So, and part of the conversation had to do with that he's been here several times, uh, talking to him. You know, I, the question is whether or not Officer Ramos has a prior history of any kind of uh, violence or or misconduct. And the truth is, I can't. I'm not able to answer that. I can't because the law won't let me, including the police officer's bill of rights. Anybody yes. Regarding the audio tape again, Ramos's, was that the most damning portion of the tape? The part that you put up on the screen that now you see my fists, they're getting ready to F you up. Was that the well, you know, the question is whether or not that was the most damaging, the most damning portion of, of the tape. And um, what is what's clear? Is that that is that's a changing? It it's a change. It's a it's a declaration by Officer Ramos that this is not just an ordinary detention. This is this is a beating. You're you're about to suffer a serious beating with my fists. An angry police officer. These fists are ready to f you up. So, and then that's very important because at that point. Any reasonable person in the in the place of the of the victim here, Kelly Thomas, would believe that this is not just a detention, it's not just an arrest, it's a beating by the police. And he has a he has a right to tr to try to get out of there. He has a right to to try to defend himself, to use reasonable force if necessary, in self defense. So it's it's a very critical part. Well, what we're looking at with Officer Cicinelli is that is that it's just it's the use of excessive force. He didn't call in the other police. He didn't he didn't start the entire uh, matter. He he didn't. He's Officer Ramos subjected Kelly Thomas to all of the force that was inflicted on Kelly Thomas by 
starting what he started by starting that unlawful conduct and by calling uh, or creating a situation where he knew other police would have to come to his assistance and that they would all all be involved in a use of force. And so, uh, but but with uh, Corporal Cicinelli, he arrived at a bit later time, certainly believing that he was assisting in a lawful arrest and doing things that that he clearly believed would would uh, would assist in getting. Uh, Kelly Thomas under control, but the amount of force that he used, in my judgment, crossed the line. Went just went too far. I don't. There's no. I can't see any any uh, justification or necessity for hitting somebody who's face up and and pinned down by the other police officers in the face with a with the uh, with this weapon. Yes, sir. Does the evidence show the number of times the taser was? used to hit? Yes. How many times was that? Four times. Four times. And does the evidence show that the other officers that are not charged, that they saw those blows? There were other officers present at the time that the taser was used. And some or all of them may well have been aware that the taser was being used. Normally, a taser is not considered to be da a dangerous or deadly weapon. Uh, tasers have been brought into the use of, into uh, into this uh, 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 police use because they're less than lethal force, and uh, uh, so I, I would not say that because a police officer sees uh, the uh, use of a taser that that necessarily would put that police officer on notice of excessive force. Now. I see that hitting with the taser in the face is as as different and having and having crossed the line. And the other officers saw that hitting, not just the tasering, but the hitting. Well, I wouldn't be able to say that. Um, there there were different people engaged in that altercation at that point. Did they all see everything that took place? I I believe not. Yes, sir. Uh, we, now we know who made the call, and it was uh, it wasn't uh, robbing cars. It was uh, that he was that he was uh, in the parking lot, and that he was trying uh, car car door handles, and uh, that's what they came out for. And don't have any indication that that's a falsified report. Yes. No, no, 16 minutes from the time. That, uh, that Officer Ramos started talking to Kelly Thomas until the time that the physical altercation broke out. All of that, yes. Um, yes, sir. There's been a lot made of political pressure and whether you would cave and whether you would do this, and clearly a lot of people will be happy and, and we can hear the yelling outside. Did you face any political pressure in making this decision from either your supporters, uh, law enforcement? Anyone pressure you, or, or did you feel that in any way? Well, you know, I think all I can say to that question is about political pressure and whether or not that had something to do with the decision. And the, and the answer to that is no. Uh, this, is, this, is, um, this is about looking at all of the evidence in the case, looking at the law, and, and making decisions as to each individual police officer and um, when when this investigation started and we when, when we started looking at it I I can just tell you that it's strictly evidence driven and that uh, um, I mean there could have been charges against all six police officers or no charges who were depending strictly on the evidence so this is the finding and, uh, and it has nothing whatsoever to do with political pressure. If there's some political fallout at some later time, right. I guess that's a possibility. Well, was there more specifically pressure for you not to charge them? I, no, I, I, don't, I didn't have any pressure. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't view 
any possible attempt at pressure to make any difference in the decision that I made. On the matter of the officers who are not charged, they are not charged, I'm going to recap and tell me if I'm wrong, they are not charged because you're not aware that they participated in or witnessed any criminal activity either in the bed of it by standing around and allowing it to happen. And have you, this is kind of a double-edged question, have you offered any of these officers a deal to not prosecute them in return for their testimony? And if not, or even if so, why would they testify at the risk of incriminating themselves since you left that door open? All right, there are a lot of questions there. Let me try to deal with them. First, <laughs> first I'll say that uh, uh, no, there have been, there have been no um, discussions, no attempts with any police officer or any attorney or anyone else to try to, to make any deals in this case in any way uh, with any, any participant. So that, that is not something that took place. And there are no discussions along that line. So that, that hasn't taken place. Um, the officers who were not charged are not charged because it, it can't be determined the evidence doesn't show, and I believe the evidence is contrary even, to them joining in the unlawful conduct. Did they knowingly participate in the unlawful conduct, of the, the, the unlawful conduct of Officer Ramos? Did they knowingly participate in an unlawful arrest? No, there's no indication of that. The indication is that they, when they arrived at the scene, they saw this, this struggle, they saw this, this, this attempt going on. Kelly Thomas was resisting he was he was uh, he was not uh, cooperative with the police he was acting as I said before in a state of in a state of panic he was not he wouldn't put his arm behind his back he wouldn't he wouldn't let them uh, wouldn't relax and let them um, get him under control so they were they were making a big effort to get him under control or to subdue him so that they could make the arrest Yes, ma'am. During the first 16 minutes, I mean, what was Clint Thomas' behavior like during the first 16 minutes, and how did that change after um, Officer Ramos' time? During the, the time of the detention, Officer Ramos was, was talking to Kelly Thomas. Officer, Officer at early in the, fairly early in that detention, uh, Officer Wolf, uh, well, excuse me, Kelly Thomas agreed uh, to allow the police to, to search that backpack. He just took it off and, and, and gave it to them to search. Officer Wolf took the backpack and took it around behind his car and, uh, and was examining the contents of the backpack. And uh, Officer Ramos was there uh, instructing uh, Kelly Thomas to sit, to put his legs out, uh, talking to him, uh, asking him certain things like his name and and uh, and and various uh, had just had a conversation with him, um, mostly instructions to put his legs out to keep him out. Part of the time, just standing, waiting for some result from the uh, uh, search of the backpack. And so that time went as that all that time that went by. During the greater part of that time, Kelly Thomas was doing what he could to comply with, uh, with Officer Ramos's instructions. He clearly was having a tough time doing that, putting his legs out, putting his hands on his knees. Uh, at one point, Officer Ramos was saying, put your legs out, put your hands on your knees, and Kelly Thomas said, well, which is it, dude? And Officer Ramos says, both. And there, there's, there's what appears to be confusion on Kelly Thomas's part about that. And the, it, it became more aggressive until, until Officer Ramos put those gloves on and did that. Yes, sir. There's a question in the back. Question in the back? Yes. Can I ask you, what did the police officers who were charged put in their reports about how much force they, they were getting back from Kelly Thomas? Did it, did it jive with the video? Did it jive with their audio recorders? Yeah, I'm really not, I'm really not able to... Uh, uh, to discuss those 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 reports of the officers who were charged, um, because those are statements that uh, we, we can't we can't talk about that pretrial. Thank you. 
Did the other officers implicate their colleagues at all in their report, the ones who were not charged? I it pretty much, it's like I said, I, they, they did, certainly didn't uh, uh, indicate any kind of knowledge of any unlawful conduct or excessive force or anything of that nature. One more question. Yes, sir. Will it hurt your prosecution chances for success if any of the other four officers who are not charged invoke the Fifth Amendment and refuse to testify about what they saw? The question is, will it hurt our prosecution if the other officers don't testify, basically, because of the Fifth Amendment? I don't believe so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention, and uh, I appreciate that you were here.